The clouds parted over the Isles of Boreas. It was time to choose. The rebellion was in trouble. Ravens were scouting for the secret rebel base. They needed a game changer. Pieces of the Sky Ripper had surfaced. Renata knew that using it could go catastrophically wrong, but he was sure he could figure out how to use it safely. Also, a temple had risen out of empty desert. The Iblis Stone was hidden there. It was a dangerous artifact. It could corrupt its user into a bloodthirsty monster. Maybe he could find a way to use it, to take its power without surrendering to its wickedness. And also, his old friend Lapino needed rescuing. Of course, Renato had a pretty strong suspicion that Lapino had betrayed the rebellion, and he had a gut feeling that he needed to use that to his advantage. The island was windswept desert. No one went there except ostriches and ostrich hunters. The Iblis Stone. It would whisper promises in his ear, offer him power for blood. But this time, Renato was sure he could master it. And so, Renato went ostrich hunting. Every child could sing verses about the Sky Ripper, but ancient codices held hints of other things. A stone that ate souls, a ruby that drank blood, a jewel only a righteous man could give away. Were all these things the Iblis Stone? Long hidden in a buried temple, another ancient item that was only resurfacing now, drawn up from the deeps by the Emperor's horrific rituals, Come too late. the Iblis Stone. It was old, wasn't it? People are so much cleverer now, and Renato was pretty sure he was cleverer than most people. not get past this point. Obviously the temple builders knew how to deal with tomb raiders. It reflected no light, like a void made solid. Nervous, he picked it up. I can make you mighty. Who said that? It was the stone, eager, thirsty. Daughter. 
That seemed tempting and terribly wrong. Zenobia was the Emperor's greatest general and a potent witch, but they had been close once, and he had a sneaking suspicion the gem would try to control him. Why not capture the core of Sky Ripper instead? It was the eye of a lost god torn out by the transcendent Emperor to power his greatest weapon. What's the core? said the stone anxiously. But even though Renardo knew how evil the gem was, he had a clever plan for dealing with it. The stone bothered him. He hated being told what to do. Wasn't that why he joined the rebellion? Wasn't that why he'd refused to be a soldier? He'd agreed to come on board only if he could freelance. The stone felt a bit clingy, and he had a feeling it did not have his best interests at heart. The sage Calaveras had told him where to find the Sky Ripper, a weapon capable of challenging the gods. Even without its armature, the core would still possess great power. He would go there. The moment he landed the Farfarer, Renardo had a rare feeling of regret. It's not too late, he thought. He could turn around and sail for Zenobia's island. He frowned. Wait a minute. He didn't want to kill Zenobia, did he? Sure, technically she was the enemy, but they'd been at sword food school together. They'd never been lovers, but somehow they'd been closer. She'd told him every secret about herself. Except the biggest one. That she was the... There was something sour in the air. Like the earth had ruptured over something that had been fermenting for a very long time. If only he had a portal onto the Emperor's ship, this would be a short war. The stone hadn't lied about what it could do for him. With each raven he cut down, he felt a jolt of power flowing into his arm. You're weak, whispered the stone. Are you afraid of it? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. It chuckled. But it's unstable. It's poisonous. I just carry it. And then if you try to use it, it would explode catastrophically. Renardo did not trust rocks that talked in his head. As he approached the core, the stone became hysterical. He had a sudden vision of plunging his gauntlet into the core and dying in anguish. That wasn't his vision, was it? The stone had sent him its darkest fears, hadn't it? He had a sudden impulse to do exactly that. He raised his right fist and plunged it into the core. There was a rush of light. He thought he could hear the stone screaming. And then he passed out. When Renato came to, the core was gone. But the Iblis stone was no longer black, but glowing with a blue light. And it was silent. I can't hear you, he sang out. And, Yoo-hoo! It didn't answer. Ha, he said. He had defeated the demonic gem with the power of his mind. Mm, he felt invincible. It was time to attack the Imperial outpost on the Nexus. Take the battle to the enemy. But among the huge crystals, there was also an observatory. A wise man would probably ask the scientists exactly what he had first. Hmm. How wise was he? As the Farfarer sailed towards the Nexus, Renardo wondered if the core had been created to silence the stone, or even to feed its hunger. <laughs> Honestly, he didn't care. He felt terrific, and he appreciated the quiet inside his head. The Nexus was infested with ravens. A 
But that didn't bother Renardo. With each death, the converted Iblis stone in his gauntlets glowed brighter, and he felt stronger. Wow. He was getting a bit bloodthirsty, wasn't he? Well, he was at work. He was a warrior. He was supposed to be. Absorbed in the stone was doing its job perfectly. Renata could feel a little eldritch jolt every time he downed a raven, but then it flowed into the glowing stone the way water flows down a riverbed. It all felt perfectly natural, as if all his life this was what he had been meant to do. Renardo tore through the last remaining guards at the outpost like hot coffee through snow. There was a fire speaker toad here. He called the council speaker. He knew she would be thrilled. And she was. She wanted him to come back to base. They had plans to discuss and a medal to give him. A large golden medal. Great, said Renardo. Let's talk about who else I can kill. Then the fire speaker croaked again. Hello, Renardo. He said. If you get sick of slaughtering second-rate birds in the Nexus, I'm waiting for you in the mountains. Zenobia. She missed him. She loved him. Once she saw how awesome he'd become, maybe she'd join him. A kiss and... and... Well, if she did refuse for some reason, he was no match for him now. Haunting him. No doubt she hoped to lure him into a trap, but it didn't matter, did it? He could fight his way out of any trap. He was invincible. <laughs> this was gonna be fun. So where was this ambush? Renato couldn't wait. At Sword Fu School, she'd always studied a little harder, practiced a little longer, complained really a lot less. And then, she'd become a sorceress. He'd always known he'd have to take her by surprise, or not at all. But this would be a surprise indeed. The mountain paths were infested with ravens. That was swell. Every time he cut one down, the stone glowed a little brighter. In fact, everything glowed a little brighter. How white is snow? And how very blue the raven blood was. Seriously, where was she? He wanted to try his new strength against hers.
already Renata knew more than he ever had. But about what? Renata felt antsy. He found a source of great power. But instead of joining with the rebels, he was on a fool's errand the Emperor's daughter had sent him on. The rebels were preparing a last-ditch attack against the Imperial fleet, counting on Renato to show up in time. Would he be too late? At the end of the path was Zenobia. I thought you were going to ambush me. He said, a little put out. I owe you better than that. I know how you feel about me, love. You want to join up with me, don't you? You gotta admit, we'd make a great team. Of all the arrogant, ham-handed, half-assed, half-witted... Oh, come on. What else are you here for? That, she said, as a dropship poured a bucket of green liquid on his head. Drowsy gas. You can't stop me with drowsy gas, Zenobia. My power's too strong. Zenobia? Where was she? When he awoke, he was staring up at the sky. Zenobia looked down at him, frowning. I probably ought to kill you, but that'd be a bit tawdry, wouldn't it? She was tossing the glowing stone from paw to paw. This is pretty. Zenobia! He shouted, and then he fell back into sleep. On the Farfarer, Renato drank his favorite headache remedy. But it did no good. Zenobia had beaten him again. Oh, he really should have listened to the Iblis Toad in the first place instead of messing around with the core. He had a bad feeling about the upcoming fight. But what kind of hero misses the final battle? Renato was bruised and tired. He wasn't looking forward to killing ravens. It didn't even seem scary. It felt like a chore, like sweeping the practice room at Swordfu School, which he'd done his best to leave for Zenobia whenever he could. What would she do with the glowing Iblis stone? That should terrify him, shouldn't it? But he just felt dumb and stupid as he carved his way towards probable doom. It was all so unfair. He'd wanted to protect himself. 
protect the world from the Iblistone's hunger for blood and souls. And all he'd done is get mugged. Next time he owned a supernatural artifact that wanted tribute, he'd serve it champagne and caviar. interested in real estate because you're about to buy the farm Zenobia was cleaning blood off her sword and weeping. It's so hungry. I can't stop killing, she said. But I fed it the core of the Sky Ripper, and now it's hungry again. She wept. It was true. The Iblistone was black again, a void that seemed to suck all the light out of the sky. Take it from me, Renato, while you still can. Okay. I'll take it, he said. Yes, he thought. This is what it means to be a hero. To save the soul of even his old enemy when it looked like all was lost. He stepped forward to accept the sword from her outstretched hand. She flipped the sword, and the blade went into his gut. As the Iblis Stone sucked his soul into its infinite darkness, he could vaguely hear a voice, something like Zenobia's chuckle. Sucker. Oh! Again? But he already had all the secrets he needed. He was sure of that. He must have not used them the right way. Ah, what was the best, worst mistake he could make? Probably trusting that traitor Lapino. The book's pages fluttered to the beginning once again, faster than before, and he fell. Special thanks to my patrons Heaven Over Hell, Justin Wood, Hobbs, Koopy Vegeta, Gunrunner, and Water.